Hello and all, welcome to the TNC podcast, your go-to Norwich City listen, following the fortunes of the promotion-chasing Canaries. Come on! We said it, didn't Come we? Come on, ten unbeaten at home! It's good. Have you dried out? We couldn't, could we? <laughs> oh, the, the hat's back in shot. The hat is back in shot. A thriller at the weekend? Uh, no. <laughs> it wasn't a thriller, um, but we ground it out. It felt almost a bit Dean Smithy. Ooh. But but and I like Dean Smith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do, annoyingly. Um They're the most satisfying ones. Look, I the think, one grindy look, I, ones. I think Yeah, mate, it, it, missing Johnny Rowe and El Hernandez, both of our, our starting wingers, um, added a different dimension to the game. Obviously a couple of youngsters on the bench, Finney Welsh and Kenneber, big up those boys by the way. Um, I think it did smell of, of a game where we just had to grind it out and fair play because we did and I'm all right with mm. that. In our current situation, it's a bit, it just feels like it doesn't really matter how we win at the moment. It The away form has been concerning, but it means that it adds pressure onto these home fixtures. And Absolutely, look, Sunderland, yeah. I've said it in the, in the preview video, Sunderland, when we played them away from home, looked like yeah. a top six contender. Yes, and I know yes. that... You know, they had a massive injury list on Saturday and we've gone through that. We know how tough it is. They were without Dak and Clark and, you know, add a few to that list. This felt like a must-win game. That Sergeant goal, I think it was probably the most I've celebrated this season, barring the row goals at Portman mm. Road and maybe Adam either against Hull. It felt big because I think if we'd have, you know, um, Hull dropped points above us, I think, it's, I think it is between us and Hull for sixth now. Right. Um, I think West Brom are probably already there. I think if we'd have drawn to Sunderland and then you go to Borough away, yeah. it feels like it's another opportunity missed and we know that we can't sort of lean on our away form. So it just felt huge. It's going to be on a knife edge for the rest of the season, Jack, every single home game. And I've I've said it before and I'll say it again. I, I, I just don't, I don't, I cannot provide any excuses for any of our home games. We should be winning all of them. Mm. And, and by the way, that includes Ipswich at home. Let's fucking have them at home. 100%, mate. I just, uh, yes, it adds pressure. Do you, do you know what was my, my highlight of, of the game last weekend, Jack? I mean, it's very easy to cite, you know, Sergeant's goal, as you say. Um, perhaps drying off. We'll talk about the weather in a minute. Um, my highlight was Lungi coming on <laughs> yeah. and absolutely battering Luke O9, yeah. who is one of those players where if he's your bastard, he's your bastard. Yeah. Um, but he's not our bastard. And so I really appreciated uh, Lungi coming on and giving him a... Well, of course, they've got should I say, or, or, or should I say, um, what's the word for it? He, he made his presence be felt. Yes. I think it's the Sunday League shout of let them know you're there. Yeah. And he certainly... And um, I'm fine with that. They have got history, of course. Cause yeah. Well, they had he, a little um, kiss, didn't they? Yeah, for those fans that don't remember, um, 09 gave, uh, gave Lungi a little kiss last time at Carrow Road. So it was good for him to get some sweet revenge. I'm glad that we won because I think if we'd have drawn... I had a couple of excuses up my sleeve for this one. And I don't think... They're the kind of excuses that you wouldn't have liked. What, the same bollocks excuses that you gave when we drew to QPR away no, and Blackburn no, away? No, different excuses. Those two time. games that are, that could cost us the playoffs? Different excuse. Okay, this go time. on. Um, the weather. Oh, God. The rain. Do you, do you the know The rain what, did affect us. I, I, do you know what? <laughs> Look, in podcasts gone by... <laughs> At this point, I would absolutely hammy you for that. Yeah, that's up there with like you know blaming that. That do you remember that derby defeat at home where the lights Stand went by off? It. Oh, the lights went off, so that's the reason why Crystal Zimmerman didn't punt it. It's a Rose rhythm Air. thing. What a load of bollocks! But anyway, I would agree with you. Yeah, the weather was that bad at the weekend that it genuinely affected us, and that is by far. I mean, I was absolutely soaked through to my bone. Yeah. But let me tell you something, right? So I went out for dinner afterwards. My mum was there. And she obviously, you know, a resident of, of the great town of Yarmouth. And I, and I was like, mum, I'm still, you know, I'm still not dry. <laughs> and um, she was like, yeah, I was listening to the game on the radio with, with Chris Gorham. It's been sunny here all afternoon. <laughs> and there you go. There's yet more proof that it never rains in Great Yarmouth. It, it does, was sunny. It she does. said she was out sunbathing. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh it dear. was the, the thing that doesn't help. So we sit on the far end of the lower Barclay, we do. right next to the away fans. 
So if the wind's in the wrong direction... We've got the gap in the stands, you see. You've got an issue there. Yes. But there were multiple things against us mm. on Saturday. Wind blowing the wrong way. Yeah. Already an issue. Now, I've seen a lot of Manchester United fans recently moaning that Old Trafford has holes in the roof. <laughs> and, that, <laughs> and that when it rains at Old Trafford, you get very wet. Well, we've got an issue. We pay one of the highest mm. season ticket prices mm. in the championship. There's holes in the lower Barclay roof. Well, look. I have come out of showers drier than I did well, the lower Barclay on Saturday. It's a concern, Jack. I mean, we have raised this on a, on a previous <laughs> podcast. Is, is that, the, 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 of course, Norwich City has its, its turny screen and, and that's lovely. And we've said before that when it rains, the water leaks through the bottom of the electric screen, right? Um, but more of a concern is what you've just raised, Jack. Mm. As you say, we are unlucky that we're, we're in, uh, in the corner of the stadium where the, the wind blows, the rain gets on us. Fine. Oh my God, the, the lower Barkley, it was like a shower. We looked up, right, and it was absolutely pissing water out of the roof. And I think it's because the gutters haven't been cleaned out, Jack. But potentially, I mean... There was, there was a row, honestly, I don't, know, I don't know which row it is, yeah. but honestly, fans had actually moved away because there was such an on-pour. I mean, I was singing at one point, da, 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 head and shoulders, because it was, it was just... It was crazy, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, I mean, it was great for me. I didn't have to put the hot water on over the weekend. It was the most soaked Road. I've ever been, ever, at Carrow. But it did mean, I mean, it, it, was a, it was a pretty bleak first half for us. It did mean that it was a scrappy affair on the pitch. Yes. First half, what was it going into? <laughs> I mean, probably your, your main thought of the first half was, thank God that's over, I can go and get inside. Yes. Um, what were your thinkings on the pitch? Were you, were you remaining confident at half-time? Uh, my confidence was on the edge of glory a little bit, Jack, because actually, you know, and by the way, statistically as well, if you look at the look at the stats from the game, I think it could have swung either way. I really do. Yes, I had faith that we'd get, you know, something from the game. Um, but did I believe we'd get the win when how we'd played in the first half? Probably not, to be honest with oh, you. Oh, really? I, I just, th I genuinely think the weather had affected us that badly. This sounds so pathetic, but anyone that went to Cow Road the weekend can genuinely testify that it was horrific. I had a great, um, you just reminded me, I had a great moment at half time. Went down the front of the concourse, went into the loos. <laughs> um, what are you about to say? Went into the loos for a wee, and the chap stood next to me was a TNC viewer. I don't know his name. Old boy. And did he announce him. himself whilst you were next to him in the Orion? No. And he said, oh, Jack, what did, what did you make of that first half? I said, oh, I've got to admit, mate, I think the rain's affected us. And he went, well, that's a load of nonsense. He said, both teams are playing in the rain. <laughs> well, he's right. That kind of well, excuse. And by the way, no, what, and by the way, great I went, point. Great I went, point. you know what, mate? Fair point, I'm off for an Estrella. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, no fair. It did yeah. No, no, no. It, it was that bad. It was that bad. But, but I think, um, I think we should go into actually. Oh, Jack, bloody hell! <laughs> We've not done our public service announcement. Sorry. Come on. Well, right. let, let's do that actually. Let's come on. Let's Where do did, the public service announcement. Let's start. So the old. It's now March. It is. Oh, oh. By the way, if you want a giggle, here's a giggle. Guess who is on the front of the Norwich City calendar for March? Lee Norwich Lee City's Lee. greatest ever winger of all time. PP himself. It's not, is Absolutely it? Absolutely glorious. Is he stuff. still at? Is, is he still at the club? No, he's buggered <laughs> off to Swansea now. Prime as well, Bohetta and Mar so it's March, oh, which means not of one course, of our greatest plays. March means that it's no longer February, which means the ultimate Norwich City raffle is closed. Yes. Um, and it was a roaring success. Yes, it was. So thank you to everyone that entered. Now we had three bundles and six auctions. Yeah. A major thank you um, to previous players at Norwich City, but mainly those still at the club who fully got behind this. Mm. And thanks to all of you who donated in your masses. Um, Chris, we raised for, for Big C, well, you raised for Big C, £7,794. All of the winners have been announced and I think have got back in touch with Big C. So if you mm. haven't won, sorry. Um, but he did do a good thing. And all of the winners should yeah. have been contacted by Big C now. Just monumental, mate. Like seven, like, seven thousand. We can't take that sum for granted. That's a huge mm. sum of, of, of money. And 
I am just beyond grateful to all of you, like law subscribers that, that just give and give and give and give. Um, not just to Big C, by the way, to, to our other charity partner, uh, mine, Norfolk and Waveney as well. Um, but yeah, just thank you so much. I, I wanna say a special thank you actually to, um, to four people regarding okay. this. One is Tom from the Big C, mm. who's been monumental in helping us logistically sort this absolute and we are a car nightmare. carnage out. Uh, technically, he he really really supported this camera. So thanks to Tom from Big C, and um, also three other people. Um, yes, the, the current players uh, gave, and all of them pretty much gave stuff. So thank you. But I want to thank the three delivery drivers. Okay, <laughs> the postman here, Angus Gunn, mm. City's number one, son of Brian Gunn. The Irish R9, Adam Eder, and of course, everyone's favourite Cuban baller, El Hernandez, mm. who managed to uh, rob uh, the Norwich City squad of various signed <laughs> items. So thank you. It's a huge amount of money and you've genuinely helped local people affected by cancer. So thank you. Well, I thank Angus as well. I don't thank his old man, Brian, who outbid me on the Kelly McCann shirt. <laughs> it does now mean though, Chris, yes. that since we've been partnered with Big C, which have, what's, what we have, about four years now? Three and a half uh, years? I don't know, can't remember. It's been a while. It's been a while. Okay. The Norwich City fans have helped us raise 41,274 pounds. And like, that's a huge figure. Um, and I'd love for all of you, a couple of, well, it's probably about six months ago now, we went over to Big C at their lab mm. at the Norfolk and Norwich Hospital and just saw the kind of stuff that this money is going towards. And this stuff is hugely expensive. Yeah. Um, so head over to the Big C website yeah. and just for yeah. yourself, look at the brilliant work they're doing because we, we can say all we want. You've got to see it for yourself. Yes. Um, and thank you so much. I, I think just just one more point on this, Jack, just to say that there's this... I think there's quite often you think when you when you give to chat you think like oh well, what's it really going towards like we've been to the lab we've seen what these boffin scientists mm. are working on um, they they desperately need it to try and find various different cures to various different types of cancer mm. also what you're contributing towards is the well-being of not just people that have got cancer or had cancer but also the families that are affected mm. by cancer you know various counseling sessions etc various therapies etc and we've been in the lab and we've seen the cost of some of these machines that they need to try and find cures and they cost a lot of money guys so mm. like every pound you give like it means so much it means so much i mean down to you know perhaps you might think of it as a small thing but obviously when people have cancer more often than not they tend to lose all of their hair and and um, big c can help with the with wigs which really help with self-confidence particularly in in women so yeah, just a huge thank you. It means the world to me and Jack. Yeah, absolutely huge. And I think, you know, whenever I'm giving to charity, I want to know where the money's going. Mm. I think that's the big thing for me. So um, if you are, if you have given or you haven't given and you want to see what Bigs are up to, check out the website. They are honestly doing great stuff and world leading research here in the fine city. And we promise to just stop banging that drum for a while now because we've relentlessly banged the drum for a month. Okay, mm. so thank you. Thanks very much. Um, Back to Norwich Sunderland. <laughs> um, <laughs> Two players I want to talk about. Okay. Particularly. Well, look, Sergeant Sergeant, we'll get to him in a minute. Fast Snack? No. Okay. No. Third not top goal not, not Fast Snack in okay. that one. The main man for me in that game, Ben Gibson. Mm. Ben Gibson was the rock. absolutely monumental at the back. And I want to just share some some stats. Okay, I Jack, like a stat. Right? Yeah. Um, not only did Gibbo get a clean sheet, he obviously also created the goal for Sargent. Yes, it was yeah. an absolutely sumptuous ball over the top for Super Sarge to uh, to smash home after sort of juggling it. It was a bit of a um, dance, wasn't it? Yeah. 91% accurate passes. I love this one though. 11 of those passes went into the final third. That shows just how positive Ben yeah, Gibson he is. is. Yeah. Doesn't just, he's not just a sideways merchant. He's able to, 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 to find a, a forward player. Excellent. Four clearances. Three headed clearances, three interceptions, and seven recoveries. Like the man was on mm. fire at the weekend. So big up Ben Gibson, who, by the way, you know, is definitely muscling himself into this conversation now. Of do do we need to give him a new contract? Or Ben Gibson? Yeah. Well, look, I think we because we've had so many centre back pairings this season, it's been difficult yeah. to work out what's the best. But I th I think Gibson is definitely one of those. Mm. As you say, I think that the key stat there that kind of is nice to have it reinforced with stats and not just the eye test 
his progressiveness when we're trying to work the ball forwards. Because when we have looked stodgy this season, it's been because it's been very sideways and teams don't mind sitting behind the ball with us. You yeah. need someone to try and make something moving forwards. And whenever Gibson's got that, he's looking for it. He's looking yeah. for runners. And yeah, I was really impressed. It was, and it was nice to get a clean sheet because I think actually, you know, we're quite a progressive team when it comes to our defence. Our, our wing-backs play incredibly high up the pitch, which does mean that there will be mm. sort of openings in behind. So to get that clean sheet, I think it was the first in 14, I want to say. It's been a, it's been a little while. Um, but I don't think that's necessarily a... Um, you know, I think the defence have been in the last month or so fairly good. Yes. And um, so it was nice to have that clean sheet for the... Um, yeah. I thought the defence in general were yeah. were good. They limited Sunderland to one chance, yeah. maybe. I mean, and it was only really the first half. I think... Oh, I'm going to really botch his name, so sorry in advance. Equa? Was it Equa? Or what? So or, you're 39. Were Equa. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, sorry. Um, Let me have a look. He was quite impressive for Sunderland. And he was all over the park in the first yeah. half. Oh, hello. But then after that, they didn't really, they didn't really get anywhere near us, and that is with credit to the North City defence, which we've criticised this season. Equi, yeah. But they was that, is that his name? He yeah, was he, very good actually. He was good for Sunderland. Um, the other player that the other defender that I'd particularly highlight is Jack Stacey. Mm. Up and down the wing, like the stamina of Stacey yeah. is something else. I mean, just as yeah. absolute fit as a fiddle. Yeah firing the balls in it's just brilliant so well done to Jack Stacey yeah well. I, I, I I really like Jack Stacey because I think you know when you're as when you're as attacking minded as he is the, the issue with that sometimes is that you're you know caught out of position or defensively you're not quite up to scratch I think he's got both mm-hmm. you know yeah, and, and, and so often you've seen him just deliver a cross and then maybe the opposition are on the counter and he's right back in position and I think that's the difference between him and maybe a Sam McCallum. Who I like Sam McCallum, but I don't think he's on the level of Jack Stacey yet. McCallum can get forwards and he's quite interested in cutting the ball out high at the pitch. But then you get a couple of occasions in a game where you go, oh, where's Sam? Yes. Oh, he's yes. still in left wing. Sure. Um, and when we get a nice kind of viewpoint of, of the of the wing backs where we sit, um, you know, it's not a great view across the whole pitch, but in terms of wing backs, we know our stuff. Um, and he was he was absolutely excellent, yeah, and it brilliant. stretches it stretches the team. I thought Sunderland their their recent form has been poor. They clearly came to try and just stay really solid, and I think they would have taken yeah. a point. And for the vast majority of the game, they did stay solid. And again, links back to the weather. Sorry to talk about it, loads. <laughs> That's even, that's another reason why that performance from Jack Stacey was so impressive because you're slipping and sliding all yeah. over the place in that weather. So fair play to Jack Stacey. We we have to we have to talk about Captain America. I mean that you know week in week out oh. he he he's my favourite Norwich player we, uh. by an absolute country mile. And the the reason I love him so much is because when he first came to Norwich, I <laughs> he was not great. <laughs> Look, I think on reflection, you can really highlight the fact that he was played out of position. Sure, but we hate context as football fans. <laughs> and also, actually, I think I think Connor Southwell, Southall. Uh, <laughs> hello, Connor. I know you watch. Um, yeah, he actually said as well, he, he referenced, um, I think, Sergeant's size and stature, I think. Sergeant's um, size and stature? That's a mouthful. Well, I did, he didn't say that, but I've just said that there. But he said something like that about how he came as a lan- lanky. I forgot what he used. But anyway, um, I think he's got a good point. I think Sergeant's really grown and developed as a, as a man and as a player. We have to remember his age. Um, it's brilliant. He... Has there ever been a bigger redemption arc at Norwich City from a player that we thought... Blumenek, as the song goes, that first we thought the Sarge was shite, now he's dynamite, right? He's brilliant. Yeah. And, he, and the thing that makes him more impressive for me, Jack, is he's still feeding off scraps. Mm. And again, that goal, it kind of, it kind, he kind of half controls it with that beautiful ginger lock of his. Yeah. Sort of bubbles up on his head, sort of kind of finds a touch and then smashes it home. Yeah. Um, I, I can't see any, any other striker in the league having the minerals to do that. Well, none of them do, and none of them do in the Premier League either. Go because on. there is a, a statistic to highlight quite convincingly that Josh Sargent isn't only the best striker in the Championship, oh, yes, yes. but the best striker in England. So this is from NCFC Numbers, by the yeah, way. So, so big it's up, legit. Big up Steve for NCFC Numbers. 
Fewest minutes per goal this season for players across the top four leagues, minimum 10 goals. Okay. Josh Sargent is currently going at a goal every 89 minutes. Wow. He's going at a goal a game. Wow. That is mightily impressive. Okay, so who's he above? Second on the list, yep. Erling Haaland. A pathetic 14 minutes per goal behind him. <laughs> He's going at a goal every 103 <laughs> minutes. Then it's Mo Salah, Alexander Isak. Wow. Guess who's fifth on the list? Go on. Chris Martin. <laughs> Chris Martin. The boy from Beckles. A goal every 120 Scotland, minutes. Scotland, sorry, should I say. Um, great to see Chris Martin on the list. Great to see Chrissy Martin on there. So which that is, is random, conclusive but, yeah. evidence. Facts don't care about feelings. Don't shout at us. We all, shout at the statistics. Yeah, we always say it, don't we, Jack? Josh Sargent is a better striker than Erling Haaland. D- don't come at us. Case closed. Yeah. Um, so we've got the best striker in the championship. Yep. Done. Yep. Best striker in the Premier League as yep. well. Done. And the best goalkeeper yep. in the division. So there you go. So therefore, we should be at, we should be at Wembley. It was a big win. Um, and an important win and a really enjoyable And do you know win. what, Jack? It kind of tees us up really nicely and I, and I know I'm I know I'm playing with fire here. Oof. Obviously, next up is, is Middlesbrough yes. away. We've also got Rotherham at home who are rock bottom of the league. Uh, by the way, by the way, Middlesbrough yes. away yes. on Wednesday night. Are we going? We're not going, right. but I'll tell you what we are doing, Jack. What's that? A TNC watch along. That's right. Get your Lakens ready. Join us, 7.30, for all of the usual nonsense. Why not? I must say as well. We've got rotten luck on these lines. We do. i tell you what, though. I hope they bloody turn up. 20% off Lakens. Right. Link in the description. If you order today, and, today? You, and you collect from either the brewery or the depot, okay. you'll have Lakens for the watch along. Wow. Perfect. So get ordering. Why Leave wouldn't description. you? Um, yeah, really looking forward to that. Yes, me too. But my point is that Sunland win, we ground out, it was dirty, it was horrible, it was it was awful, but I loved it. <laughs> um, and then we go into these next two games, Middlesbrough away. With, by the way, they're there for the taking right now. Oh, they're the current, the current condition that that team are in. Yeah. I've spoken to a couple of Middlesbrough fans, including the Middlesbrough fan channel, um, who actually, I think he WhatsApp me, um, WhatsApp me saying, bite your hand off for a draw, Reed, oh, or blimey. something like that, right? Um, and then Rotherham at home. Like, come on, let's get another six points. It's a big week, this. Uh, huge, <coughs> huge week. And do you know what? It puts a lot of pressure on Hull, it puts a lot of pressure on West Brom as well. Don't don't say that they're oh, we in can it. See Jack. you, West Brom. Yeah, we're watching oh, you. We can see you. We're watching you, old baggies. <laughs> All right, and look, there's a long way to go in this season. Yeah, there's a long way to go, and those hats well, are calling. Well, if you weren't already excited, go on. Let me excite you further. Turn me on. Middlesbrough's recent form. Yeah, let's let's go through it. Stoke they played. Can I just say, last time you did this, it was QPR away. No, it so. wasn't. No, it wasn't. It was Sunderland. We beat them. <laughs> right, go on then. Stoke, they're in the bottom three. Yeah. You must be thinking, oh, Middlesbrough must have done them, what, 5-6 nil? Well, Stoke would, Stoke have been a shit show yeah. recently. So they, Middlesbrough must have won. They must have won. They got beat 2-0. No. Yeah. By Stoke? Yep. Yeah. The previous Saturday to that, right. they were at home yes. to Plymouth. Plymouth have got an awful away record. Just recently up. So Maybe 2-3-0. Nil. You'd expect a uh, draw at worst. They lost. No. 2-0. Oh! Now, I won't make us laugh of this one. The previous Saturday... To be fair, they we were, lost 6-2 to Plymouth, so we can't laugh at that. The previous Saturday, they were away to Leicester. Yeah. They beat them, so we'll ignore that. Uh, um, <laughs> that's a hell of a result, by the way. But the previous two to that, um, away to Preston. Oh, we've seen Preston. Oh, awful. Lost 2-1. Well, they're horrible teams to play against. And then they? they were at home to Bristol City, yeah. which is mid-table nothingness. Yeah. They lost to them as well. So therefore, we've got a 1-1 draw. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time we did a What's Wrong and we won? Uh, I don't it want has to been think years. about it. I think COVID was still raving. Do, 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 you, know, do, you, know what, do you know what, Jack? Um, I thought it was going to come for that Watford one. Because we, old, we had old... Hurricane Huang. Hu- do you remember Hurricane Huang? Just, just about. Just literally whanged one in the back of the net. I've never seen um, a goal <laughs> that fantastic in my life. Um, and then, of course, it was a Danny Bart header, wasn't it, in that game? But yet we still couldn't get the three points. So, look, it's got to, it's got to happen on Wednesday night. I know that, that quite a few of the Norwich boys watch this. Boys, come on. Mm. Do it. My, my, before we get on to Twitter questions, we've talk, talked about our favourite um, moment during the game. Okay. Post-match, my favourite moment 
celebrations from Onel Hernandez in his bed. <laughs> so poor old Onel. Oh, well, yeah, of course, yeah. He's bloody broken his foot. What's he done that for? Horrendous luck. Horrendous luck. And obviously, have to say, you know, love and thoughts and, and support go out to Onel Hernandez, who, you know, now not only undergoes a... Um, you know, uh, operation and, and, and a lot of, you know, recovery work. But, you know, this is a mental battle now as well. Um, out for the season, just as he was starting to hit form. It's such a shame. And, you know, big up on it. We, we all love Anel, mm. don't we? And um, I'm sure that the Yellow Army will, will join us in, um, you know, sending Anel lots of lots of love and support. To, and Anel's uh, got a YouTube channel. He has, called The Cuban Baller. Which, which is exactly why... Um, that's where that video clip came was from, wasn't it? I didn't know if he just sort of sent it to you. Oh, no. <laughs> Could you imagine? And I leaked it. Um, no. Uh, it's no. well worth a watch, Yeah, actually, no, it's funny. Ba- basically, he was watching the game from his bed and he was celebrating. And Brilliant. it's on the Talk Norris City socials. Go and check it out. Lots of Twitter questions to get through. A game on Wednesday. We better get to this. Let's do it. Right, first question uh, is in from Craig. Uh, we've just had to make, make a cut, by the way, um, which we can't tell you the reason why. Question, when will the drip in the Barclay stand be fixed? Goodness. Um, it's not just a drip, Jack. Th- Craig, th- this is a gaping hole. Yeah, this... It was a water feature. Well, I, I, there's two things to... Call. Clean the gutters out. Clean the gutters out. Yeah, and um, yeah, dip into the summer transfer budget. Yeah, well, I think we might have to. It, it, I would almost will, be willing to sacrifice yeah. a new striker. Yeah, could you imagine that? Hello, Mr. Atene- <laughs> Atenasio, how are you doing? Yeah. Um, yeah, sorry. I know that we were talking about, you know, getting a CDM. Actually, we need to clean the gutters out. Do you mind just sending us 10 million quid for that? Is that yeah. all right? Cheers, bye. Hopefully soon. Interesting. Anyway, we Norwich don't know, Norwich Hub. Norwich Hub. Hello, Norwich Hub. Uh, Special mention to Norwich Hub. Yes. Because Norwich Hub, fantastic social media account, sharing all sorts of Norwich City social media superbness. Um, and it's their first time mm. coming to Carrow Road yeah. uh, for the Rotherham game. Which and I, and I love that, when people make epic journeys and come over for the first time. So well, I, big I, up to yeah, you, Norwich and, Hub. And I felt a little bit sorry for Norwich Hub because I'd seen that he'd... Um, Put his, he's over for what five days or something. He'd put his itinerary out. He'd plan a lovely few days with him and his missus, right? <laughs> Couple of days in Norwich and then seeing the finer sights of, of um, Norfolk. And Norwich Hub had got it bang on. He'd seen the raves about Great Yarmouth. He'd fallen for your fake news and he'd propaganda. A beautiful day in Great Yarmouth. He was going to go along the seafront, maybe drop into a few arcades, see the history, the culture of the finest coastal town, not only in Norfolk but on the East Coast. And he was put off by some, what I can only describe as trolls. Right. And and people were I'm saying, don't this. go to Yarmouth, blah, blah, blah. Right, that's Norwich it. Hub, if you want a day in Yarmouth, right. let me know and I'll come and join you. I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to do this. Now, those of you that follow me on social media will have seen that despite Jack's fake news propaganda for Great Yarmouth, there was a Vox Pop done recently with um, uh, someone on the streets of Yarmouth. Now, Let's just go live to, I don't know what his name is, we'll call him Barry, okay? Let's listen to what Barry has to say about Great Yarmouth. You're not happy? No, I'm not. Yarmouth's a shit hole. Okay, has it got worse? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, 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 oh. So when did this start going downhill? Uh, yeah. After the war, we had a challenge. <laughs> Great people. We had a ice cream. We had a... a bit dishevelled, a bit it's in decline. It's a shizzle, yeah, I'm with it. Okay, mate. And I'll go pay my council tax. <laughs> So there we go. Despite Jack's fake news, I'm sure you, I'm sure you've seen that. What's now a viral clip, but I have to tell you the context behind this. He was a paid actor. <laughs> he was a paid actor rubbish, dropped rubbish. in by the Norwich right, Council. Let's, let's move on before we get into the political <laughs> trouble. Um, Zeki, hello, my friend. Um, he's his statement. I think it's time for our fans to put some respect on Gibson's name. He's been scapegoated for far too long. He was a colossal at the back and sprayed passes left, right and centre with ease. Great to see him back to his best. I wholeheartedly agree yeah, with that yeah. statement. Yeah. We've already bigged up Ben Gibson. Um, let's do it again. Yeah. Ben Gibson. And you know the thing with, with, with Ben as well is Kenny McLean has rightly got plaudits this season. And yeah. I think we'll probably actually go on to win player of the season. 
Ben Gibson's been through a lot this year yes. with um, kind of what's going on in his personal life. And thank goodness that's seemingly, you know, getting a little bit better now. But th- not once has he moaned or groaned or taken mm. his clear kind of, um, you know, it's, he's always put Norwich City first and remained professional and done his job to a really good standard. And so, he would have been well within his rights, Jack, to come out and say, guys, give me a break. Yeah. Do you have any idea what I'm going yeah, through yeah. right now? So no, I, I agree with that. I, I love Ben Gibson. A, a, and again, on this on this Gibson point, uh, Luke Elliott sends in a rave. Oh. He says Gibson turned into Beckenbauer. There you go. Yeah, he was he was great. And I think actually in Ben and Bauer. I think when you're watching the game in the moment, you're not well. I, I'm not. Maybe it's just the way I watch football. I'm not really taking too much attention of your centre backs. You know, I'm I'm wanting to see the flicks and tricks from from Fast Act and the goals from Sargent. Not really thinking about Gibson. So if, if, if people are saying, wow, what a performance, you, it really was a great performance. It was well brilliant done. performance. Um, we didn't actually read out Norwich Hub's question. Oh, sorry, sorry Norwich I Hub. I just realised right, that. Right, cool then. Um, so he says, first of all, absolutely love Great Yarmouth. Can't wait to visit. <laughs> Second, if we finish in the top six, but don't get promoted, will Wagner have earned enough respect from the fans to be mm. back next season? Or should we still look to replace him? It's a great mm, question. Look, I, I think... Uh, and actually, this is... And I'm going to answer you, Norwich Hub. This is linked to Ryan's question. He says, when was the last time Norwich went on this long unbeaten... Uh, this long unbeaten at home? Carrot has become a fortress. Just need the away form to pick up ever so slightly. And sixth is ours. So that was from OTBC yeah. Ryan. And, and this directly links to that, right? Now, we've had brilliant purple patches under David Wagner before, right? Where we've gone on this, you know, this this great run of form. And it's at this point, that 10 or 11th game, we fall off the cliff. Sure. So I think, I do think Norwich fans are starting to, to actually come back on side again, which is a real positive, a real positive. And I've seen a lot of lazy trolls post stuff on our YouTube videos um, recently, Jack, saying, oh, Oh, you! Oh, any excuse to get Wagner out, say Wagner out. No, 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 no. Opinions can change when you're presented with new facts. Again, facts don't care about feelings, right? And at the moment, David Wagner and his North City coaching staff are doing a fantastic job at home. At home, and that's okay, Jack. If that's what gets us in the playoffs, when we've been through the absolute sack of shit that was October and November. Okay. However, my gut says Norwich Hub. I, I, I can't see Norwich fans changing their mind. I don't even think it's about what Norwich fans think because I, I think actually when you're a football club, you shouldn't be making decisions. True, based on, true, true, uh, uh, true. Ben Napper will want his own project. I, I think I think so too. And, and it's not even an anti-Wagner thing at this point. It is, Napper will want his own project. He'll want someone that's aligned. He'll want to know them really well. We've seen the links with Carlos Cuesta at Arsenal. Yes. It may well be him, it might not be. Um, But that kind of person makes a lot of Mm. sense. And also, for Wagner, right, when you're uh, in any walk of life or job, you want to go out on top. You see Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool this season. He's going out while it's still on top. Yeah, that's true. Well, if Wagner does manage to get into the top six... In terms of his career, yeah, he'd he'd get another championship job. I wouldn't... Say if we got into the top six and by a miracle get promoted, I wouldn't be surprised if if he changes Wagner in the summer. I mean, who knows? I mean, the other thing is we're talking about, you know, Napa wanting his man. What about the Ateneos? Yeah, yeah. They'll whether we're in the Premier right? League next season, whether we're not, whether we get into the mm. top six, I honestly see it. Wagner's gone regardless of the outcome. But what I have to say and make so super clear to all the people that have gone, oh, you're Wagner out and, and therefore you have to, you know, keep your flag in that sand and da 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 da. I have nothing but respect for David Wagner in terms of who he is, how he operates. He's still got his moral compass intact. He's a really, really top man, great professional. All the players really respect him. And and therefore, you have to take your hat off to him and say, fair play, David, you've turned it around this season. Yeah. And, and long may that home form and hopefully um, the away form picks up and it continues on. Jack Wright says, does Angus Gunn take his chicken, lemon and herb, or extra hot. Um, well, you've got some debts racking up, young man. <laughs> well, can I just say on the old um, every every <laughs> for those that don't know, um, I'll bore you with it if you do know already. Sorry, I made a bet with Angus when he came here on loan from 
it was Man City, wasn't it, back in the day, yeah. uh, under Daniel Farker in 20... Was that? 18. That was his 19. first season, wasn't it, I think it 17, was? 17, 18. Blimey. Yeah. I said, Angus, every clean sheet, it's a, it's a Nando's on me. Um, but that was only for one season. But anyway, um, I believe it's Lemon and Herb. Oh, really? And I believe he's a butterfly chicken kind of guy. Yeah. Which is... Interesting. And I guess as a footballer, what's he getting? Like peas and something healthy? Oh, he went... Oh, by, by the way, he did go Rice. health. He did go yeah. health. Yeah, I think he went with for the... I think they call them macho peas yeah, and something else. Yeah, they're else, good they are. Anyway, so there you go, Jack Wright. He's not um, He's not a hot or extra hot kind of guy. Um, Matt Gregory, this is a great question. Go on. Who starts up front for you today if you had to choose current Josh Sargent or 2021 season Timu Puki? Bloody hell. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's tough. I think, look, I think Sargent oh. is, in terms of a complete striker, Blimey. in terms of a complete striker and someone that can feed off scraps, I think it's probably Sargent. But I think there's a bit of recency bias here, though, because you yeah, were it, on the Timu Puki bandwagon big time. Oh, man. And rightly so. But I think Puki had Buendia behind him in the championship. Okay. Completely different player. Puki's the better finisher. I've got no doubt about that. He was yeah. probably the most gifted finisher in those couple of seasons that I've ever seen. He, yes. You put him one on one, he scores. Yeah. Sargent has has the ability to look completely different setups in this team. Sargent's the best striker. What what I what I would say is Sargent is better aerially. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I think Sargent is stronger. Although I think Sargent's runs are absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I'd yeah. Yeah. Say that Pookie's runs were are better oh I don't know that's a tough one let us know in the comments in the replies on social media uh, what's the question 2020 2021 Timu Puki yeah or 18-19 have they both in great yeah. seasons or current day Josh Sargent let us know George Hale certainly Go knows he says statement Sargent's the best striker there's ever been at Norwich City oh. the way he, can, whoa, 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 the way whoa, whoa. he can hold the ball up with his whoa. strength pass like a midfielder and finish like a goat I have nothing more to say about this beautiful American man. Sergeant's on fire and your defence is terrified. I love that, Best chance. striker ever at Norwich City. No, nah, he's not the best striker ever at Norwich City. But he has had the biggest redemption arc ever. I think maybe com- maybe competing with you and Roberts, who also got um, a bucket load of grief um, for, for a bit of a false start at Norwich City and then turned it around and became um, an absolute hero and legend for the football club. And, and Ewan, for example... Ewan mm. Roberts is factually a better striker for Norwich City than Josh Sargent because he scored more goals. Facts okay. don't care about feelings, right? Okay. Um, so take away recency bias. You have to say that Sargent's still got some work to do. And I actually think, unfortunately, for, for Norwich City fans, if Sargent continues <laughs> and we don't get promoted... Oh, he's gone. I mean, if you're a Premier League club, he's an absolute banker. I mean, he's... he's, he's well, Brentford have been linked to him. Yeah, but Brentford are being linked with everyone, to be fair, Jack. But what I would say is I would be stunned if Sargent doesn't get a move in the summer, a big money move in the summer. Yeah, I think I saw someone tweeting about it the other day. You know how Halsey scored like, what, nearly 100 goals? Pookie the same, yeah. you and Roberts. It's going to be really difficult now, I think, for a Norwich striker to get to that level. Mm-hmm. Because if they're great in the championship and we don't go up, they just get snapped. Yes. They're probably not going to score that level of goals if we're in the Premier League. So you're almost for someone now to get to that level of goals you kind of just need like a decent striker and Norwich just meandering in the mm. championship and that's not what we want so I think those goal scoring records of Holt and you know the others at the top they're not going to be beaten for a very long while yeah no I agree with that I agree what's next up <clears throat> um, here we go this is a bit of, a bit of perspective Huxley says question Wagner saying post-match that he loved everything on Saturday apart from the weather shows either a glaring lack of perspective on the performance, (laughs) the desire to paper over the chasms of his and his coaching staff's team tactical now, or that he needs an umbrella. I'm, I'm, <laughs> but he, he needs an umbrella for sure. Um, I must admit, I, I listened to David's post match and I thought, bloody hell, mate, what game have you watched? Because it was a, I was, a, what was it? What was his words? Like, he I loved was everything. everything. I loved everything. If you love everything about that game, I'm, I'm worried. But look, it doesn't matter. We got the win. And, but it's and, funny, and isn't it? Because it, it, it does show the, the fine margins and almost the fickleness of football fans. Yeah. If we'd have drawn that nil-nil, 
we'd be going, oh, couldn't get past Sunderland yeah. in bad form, bit stodgy. So look, we're all kind of hypocrites in in a sense, but there will be games yes. through any one season where you do just need to grind them out. And actually, I thought we I thought we did deserve to win on Saturday. Yeah, I do think. I do think overall we did. Um, there was a sergeant chance and Borja Sainz chance as well in the first half, which. You know, again, it's where it takes a deflection. It, it, you know, a bit of a slice of luck that goes your way, and, and maybe that game ends up three nil. Um, Kieran JW thirteen says question: With two attacking youngsters on the bench, was bringing on the CDM Liam Gibbs as a winger really the right decision? PS book the bus. Um, Kieran, thanks for your question. <laughs> now, I think I, I'm at the point now, Jack, where I feel sorry for Liam Gibbs. I feel sorry for him. You feel sorry for and a I would rich be, young man playing for Norwich City. Yeah, I do. Because I think that his growth and development has has been stifled this season. Um, he is therefore going to be criticised more when he comes on because he's not been given a run of games. He's played. Uh, he's not played in his right position. And this isn't just something that's come from us. This is a discussion that a lot of Norwich fans are talking about online. Surely we can't play Liam Gibbs out wide. I mean, he's played and everywhere. I, and I, and by the way, like to to really, uh, to really like put my flag in the sand on Gibbs when he came in, I I said that you know this is a player that has the same similar attributes as Ollie Skip. You know, a real he he can buzz everywhere all over the pitch. He's got a bundle of pace, a bundle of energy, can make a tackle. I think David Wagner is right in terms of the fact that he is fast. There's a lot of development to be done, of course. I'm not saying he's as good as him. I'm not saying that he could be, but I'm just saying he got, he's got the same skills and attributes as, as Ollie Skip, right? So I feel sorry for Liam Gibbs, but and, and you're particularly critical of Liam well, Gibbs, I, but you've got to feel sorry for him now, well, Jack. Yeah, but surely. actually, in, in terms of Saturday, I, d- I wasn't mad with it. Fastnack had a really poor game. I didn't think he, he added much at all. Gibbs came on in, what, like the 75th minute or something like that? Yeah. Or not have even been after goal. I can't, no, it was before the goal. I think to have brought on Welsh or Abbo at that moment in time would have been quite naive. It was a it was a game that could have swung either way. It was in the balance. We needed a, a, a man in there that had played at this level before. Yes, and I agree. Could could dig in and do the dirty yeah. work if needed. And actually, you know, he's energetic, Liam Gibbs. Yes, he's not a winner. We know that. But for fifteen minutes yeah. against Sunderland, I didn't see much. Right I think it. I do side with you, James. and also. There, there wasn't a Hernandez or a Rowe to bring off the bench. We were limited. For so sure. you either bring on uh, Finley Welsh yep. or you bring on Gibbs. And actually, in that moment, I'm going for Gibbs. So I'm okay with it. During our call-out for contributions, Jack, we ask for rants, raves, questions and statements. Yes, we do. We ask them every week. We do. There's a new category this week Ooh. that's been sent in by we okay um, with that? NCFC Pain, Norwich image, Images That Proceed mm. I know Unfortunate the account Events. Very well. Um, anyway, he or they, I don't know or she. their gender, says proposition. <laughs> proposition. Proposition, okay. Johnny oh, no, Rose. I've seen this. I know Johnny Rose about. injury likely rules him out of the bet. So the bet, to clarify, was Jack said if Johnny Rowe gets in the team of the season, he will give a grand to Big C. Yeah. Okay. So he says, Johnny Rowe's injury uh, likely rules him out of the of the bet. If any Norwich player makes team of the season, will Jack Reeve still donate £500? If no one makes it, I'll donate £250. Deal. Well, f- first of all, not a fair bet. If I've got to put up more than NCFC pain, I tell you what, that account has caused me a lot of pain this season. Okay, well. So- no, I'm not actually, because the whole point of the row bet was it was a season long. Don't be boring. It was a season long Just bet. Just say yes. But, I, but I, I don't, like, when you're betting on something. Hang on, this is a win-win, Jack, because... Shit, right, but I think Josh Sargent, I think Sarah example. probably does get into right. the season. Right, okay, so it's five hundred quid to big. No, team. but you're, when you're betting, you're betting against like the house, <laughs> right? If I think it's going to happen, it's not a bet. I'm sorry, NCFC Payne. I tried. We will do something. Let me think of something. To be if... fair, we've done a bloody lot, right? We've just raised and I'm seven skin, grand plus. Right? I'm paying six hundred <laughs> quid for a bar- lower Bartley ticket and get, and I need a new waterproof and, jacket. Yeah, well. and we get wet and we get pissed on. No, I, 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 I do think. I do think Sarah probably gets in the in the team of the season if we go up. Twitchy Terry. Oi oi Savaloys. Twitchy Terry. 
Oi Oi Savaloy is up, up a notch bin the blues statement. <laughs> up the mare. Anyone who disagrees is a closet blue. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a strong statement. Um, yeah, look, Kenny, Kenny McLean is... I mean, David Wagner likened him to a Scottish Braveheart because... <laughs> did he? Yeah, he did. Because, Jack, have you seen... Have you actually done your research? No. Right. Well, little do you know that last week, Kenny missed two training oh, no, I know sessions. That, yeah, yeah, right, okay. Yeah. And he was in the recovery pool on match day to try to desperately prepare to play in that game of football, right? But, it's I, a big game, Jack. Everyone was making out it was a massive deal that Kenny McLean couldn't walk on Thursday. Right. I can barely walk when I get out of bed every day. Right. Anyway, it was brilliant. It's a daily just, struggle, just, Kenny. Just don't listen to him. Kenny, the fact that Kenny played as well as he did yeah. at the weekend, it says everything that you need to know about the men. He's brilliant. And again, really puts him at the forefront of the player of the season discussion. Kenny, I, it, I'm voting for him. Are you? Is that where you're voting? I mean, unless Sargent scores, you know, 15 goals from now until mm. the end of the season, scores at Wembley. If I was to vote for today, yeah, it would be Kenny McLean. A link to Kenny McLean. Robin, NCFC Robin, says rant. We've just won and he's put a rant in. Ranty Robin. The disrespect from a certain group of fans to McLean is an absolute joke. He's been arguably our best player all season. The group that done it should be ashamed. It's embarrassing. I, I, I heard that, that there were some moans about... Moaners moaning about moaners, yeah. which always makes me laugh slightly. And moan. All I've seen for Kenny McLean this season has been love. I'm not seeing a single person moan about Kenny McLean. Well, yeah, look, and... Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. They probably weren't moaning at Kenny at the weekend. They were probably moaning that they were in a flooded seat. Yeah. Had trench foot. I tend to agree. Um, Norfolk Paul. Hello, Norfolk He's Paul. back with another definition. Just wanted to give a shout out to you both for this podcast. Win, lose or draw, you're here and we always get a laugh. According to Urban Dictionary, the word reeve means, I think I'll just let you see it. Hashtag big legend. So he's attached an image. Reeve. That's got to be photoshopped. I don't think it I is. Can't, I'm not sure I can read that out. You can oh, say, God. skip out the middle bit. Okay, a legend with a big pee-pee. <laughs> what a... A big pee-pee? A pee-pee. Oh, God, let's quickly move on. I for- um, I'd forgotten, actually, just how catastrophic Poheta's final haircut was. Oh, my God. What? Well, go Have you seen who's on April? No, go on. Who? <laughs> Who's on April? Whoever made this calendar needs sacking. I forgot this guy even had played for Norwich. Go on. Who? April. April is. Adam Forshaw. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is it going to be Leroy? Okay, that's Ashley Barnes on May. No one, on... it always does make me laugh. There's a real lack Forshaw. of... Forshaw. A real lack of thought goes into Biggest the NCFC Biggest month of a championship season. I, like I don't think the Norwich City um, retail team truly understand just how important the Norwich City calendar is. <laughs> Okay, let's start thinking about that next season, please. Right, Sam Adamson says, Rave, Friendship Cup down, and at, right, whoa, 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 right, okay. I need to clarify something here. For those of you that know the Friendship Cup, okay, it's a competition between Norwich and Sunderland that dates back from when we played them in the Mill Cup, and it's awarded to the team mm. that not only wins the games, but wins by the biggest goal margin. And unfortunately oh, for no. Norwich City... Sunderland retained the Friendship Cup because, of course, they beat us by more goals oh. at the Stadium of Light. So, sorry. So, we can't friendship, even we stick can't, a star on the shirt. We can't. We can't stick a star on the shirt. Anyway, and a bright future ahead. Playoffs are ready for us now and we are ready for them. Bring on whoever challenges us because we have the best squad in the league. Huh? OTBC, Common Yellows. At, he's just, Where's that come he's from? He's just stuck on the end of this. Adam Forshaw was shit. Bloody that's hell, really Sam. weird. I hadn't seen that. I've just seen Sam, that. That's a bit harsh. Come on. I, I, I do kind of like Sam's let the intrusive thoughts win there. Okay. It, it's, been, it's been in the back of my mind. He's obviously had a bit of a trauma with, with Adam Forshaw. Okay. And he's just written it down. For I kind sure. of respect it. For sure. Um, that's me done on the questions, by the way. Have you got any more? Yeah, just one final one from Kai. Josh Sargent's my favourite American, and I am American. <laughs> I agree. I, I honestly think there is more... Tr- that two things are going to happen this summer if um, we don't get promoted. No, this is No, I'm, dr- I'm dreading this summer. Sergeant goes for like, I would, I would accept nothing south of 30 million. Agreed. Or he becomes the new president of America. 
Well, he's got to be in the running, isn't he? Surely, surely. I honestly, if if Brentford come in for Sargent yeah. this summer, yeah. they get sixty million yeah. for Tony, and they come anywhere south of thirty million, we phone the police and say, "Excuse me, we're tr- I, I, I am a victim of ex- fraud." Yeah, they're trying to extort us of cash. Yeah, I, I I, you're you're looking. I think now at a forty million pounds. And, and and seriously, if there e- if there is ever a time, Mister Napper, for you to change the wage structure at Norwich City, okay, please just. Give ev- give anything and everything to Josh Sargent. I've said this about Johnny Rowe. I've said it about Sarah. I'm going to say it about Sargent. You're going to bankrupt well. us. I don't care. Like build the fucking statue, <laughs> if that's what it takes. We'll have Sargent with his arms out. No. Oh no, sorry. We've got Sarah at the top of the yeah. city stand like that, haven't yeah. we? And Christ the Redeemer. Stand. I know what we could do. What for Sarge? Yeah. What are we going for? Statue. Yeah. Salute. Yes. And you put him on the top of the lower Barclay to cover up the leak. <laughs> <laughs> Double bubble. I like it. Good idea, Jack. Yeah. And the, oh yeah, because the angle of yeah. the salute can be the, the can water be the gutter. can fall on it. Yeah. That can be the gutter. Yeah, the sergeant guttering. So Josh, the, 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 the sergeant City. statue yeah. can almost be a pillar on the stand. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. And by the way, speaking of the pillar on that stand, there's this guy in the lower Barclay, right? And I fucking, I love him. I fucking love a bit of passion. You know me. And anyone that puts their head above the parapet. <laughs> to, you know, make some noise and back the boys, I'm fine with it. There is a bloke that must go home <laughs> and his wife must be thinking, what on earth are you doing? Because there's this bloke and he is, all he does, he absolutely slams this massive metal pillar on the Barclay, all game, just spanking it <laughs> over and over, just <laughs> constantly spanking it, right? And I think to myself, <laughs> your hand must be so red raw. I've never seen anything like it, but seriously. <laughs> It's what? just relentless. And I actually start to think, <laughs> I'm worried about this pillar on the left-hand side of the, of the Barclay Jack because it's taking an absolute battering <laughs> every game. We've, we've, of course, got the drum. We've got another drum. It's a guy just absolutely <laughs> it spanking must, it. It I'm, must really hurt. Yeah. But, but do you know what? Passion. Love you know it. The, do you ever watch the Bond film when the villain, he, he's he's lost his arm and he's got the, yes, the metal yes, pincer? Yes, yes, yes. You can end up like that. Yeah. But that would sound great. Yeah, well, even Stainless louder. steel maybe, fist maybe on, a, that, on a... Maybe that's the reason why he's going for it. Um, so Norwich beat Borough on Wednesday. Yes, And correct. then we've got Rotherham. Yeah, easy. Rotherham on Saturday. Yeah. So end yeah. of this week, we'll be fifth. Join us for the TNC watch along. I'm on looking Wednesday forward night. to it. Please do join us. Get your popcorn, get your Lakens, 20% off. Um, and once again, thank you for raising 7,000. Seven thousand. Seven, seven, seven thousand and. You don't need any Lakens. More than 7,000 pounds. We raised some money. Lots of money. And, and it's all thanks to you, not us, you. So thank you. You. Uh, get your Lakens. The LGR. How good is the LGR, by the way? The Lakens oh, Lager is just... disgustingly good. <sighs> Almost as good as <laughs> the Barclays the, Spanker. The score on Wednesday night. Okay. Because this is going to be a cricket score. The Reds are. Oh, okay. I think. Okay. Norwich are going to turn up away. Mm-hmm. Statement performance. Really? Statement performance. Yeah. And, you know. Is it one that teams look at and go, fuck me, where have Norwich <laughs> come from? Yeah, probably. Yeah. They go, God, I thought they were 14th. There is one player that this game. Guarantees a goal from. Just think, away from home, probably going to be raining slightly. Oh, do you know what I know what you're going to say? I know there is only one say. play that you can guarantee scores. Ben Gibson. No. He used to play for Middlesbrough. No, but just just think again. Think again. In the rain. What? Barnsley. No, just think. Type of game that this game suits. Away oh, from home. Yeah. Goal. Probably a little fumble over the line. What? I don't know. Who? Christian Fasnack. He always scores in his <laughs> touchdown. The colourway. It's a Farsi type of game. He just scores. Yeah. He just scores. Stick it in Farsi. Absolutely. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. We'll uh, we'll be back next Monday for another podcast where we'll be raving about a couple of wins. Life is good. Wednesday. Watch along. Yeah. See you there. Bye, everyone. 